Hi, everybody, and welcome to Sunday Open Studio. We have a special guest with us today. This is Pat Gauthier, coming from her home studio, I believe. And she is going to be talking to us a little bit about her art, what she does, and then she'll be sharing a demonstration, a painting demonstration with us as well. Hi, Pat, how are you today? Hi, I'm really well. Uh, how are you, Anna Maria? Maria? Maria, yeah, I'm doing really well. Um, you've had an exhibition up at Two Rivers Gallery for quite some time now. I believe it's called Ranchscapes. Yes, it was, uh, it was the opening was the 12th. I do believe things closed about one week later and it's been closed up till what, I don't know, mid-June? Mid-June, end of June, yeah, and it's closing yeah. today, right? July 19th, I believe is the last day yeah. it's going to be closing. Yeah. But we did, yeah. Megan did do a virtual tour that people can check out online and they can still see your artwork that way. Yes, I even checked that out uh, this morning again and, and uh, she did a really good job and really, I really enjoyed that. Mm -hmm. So everybody go ahead and check out Pat's paintings online. And Pat, I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit about who you are, maybe where you are, and what inspires your painting? What do you like to do with your art? Well, I, I'm telling you, I, a lot of things inspire me. The whole world inspires me, really. But to, for this particular body of work, it's been over a few years of building uh, paintings that are around quite a bit around ranching. Like I haven't added a lot of people or say tractors, not that kind of farming, more of the, the cattle and, and horses and uh, in that body of work. I guess I would, I would like to share a little bit about ranching and our struggles to start, you know, in Fort St. James, we were one of the largest ranches and we were a new ranch, you know, not like some old branches in the Chilcote and Wade South, you know, there've been generations of, of we, we started this in our mid years hmm. and we, you know, we worked pretty hard. That's a big undertaking. Developed, developed a lot of land and we, we really, you know, had a good lifestyle. Um, our children, some were older and some were younger and we, you know, worked together and, and they helped us quite a bit. Now that I'm retired, I am painting more, a lot more. Do you miss ranching, Pat? Well, not really, because I have a lot of good memory. And so today you have a painting demonstration for us, don't you? I have a painting demonstration. Um, Two Rivers asked me if I would help out with doing a open studio. And it turns out that, well, the way it's closed, it, I did I did a video. If you don't have any acrylic paint and, and that, you could you could uh, draw it on a piece of paper with felt pen mm -hmm. or pencil. Or just know, use it or, as inspiration for whatever you want to do in the media that you have, right? That's right, just an inspiration. And I mean, this is a, a cow, but you could do the same thing with your dog. It's It's about, if you actually watch it, and you watch how it's done, it could be easily a cat or a dog oh. because it's all about uh, using your brush in the stroke, in the direction to make hair and shapes. And it could be any subject there. Well, that for this show, it was the cows, and that's all I could come up with. <laughs> But that's what you have. And we all use what we have as our inspiration for the art that we make, don't we? All right. So let's watch that video, Pat. Thanks so much for joining us. And we'll move into the demonstration so people can enjoy watching you and maybe follow along with their own supplies. Okay. Well, I, I hope that you do. Yeah, have fun. Thanks. Okay. Bye-bye. Everybody, and I'll see you next week, all right? Have fun with Pat's video. Bye-bye. Hello, my name is Pat Goche. I'm going to be painting a demo of a cow's face today. This is on a uh, eight by 10 canvas that is prepped in black.
I'm mixing some browns up and I'll be adding some reds to the to the mix. Here I'm just thinking it's a bit too red. So I've mixed some brown with the red to tone it down. So this uh this is acrylic paint with a very simple palette of red, blue, yellow, brown, black, and white. Uh, I have uh, two, two reds, which is warm, one is warm and, and one is cool, also the yellow and uh, the blue, each warm and cool. This is a really good palette to, to mix any color you would, you can imagine. Today it's pretty simple. See, I'm adding some reds to the, the cow's top of the ear. This format on this uh, 8x10 only gives me a small area really to add a cow's face and their ears. So in this I have cut off the ears, but you can see easily that you know it's a cow, even though the tips are not there. So I'm mixing in some darker value into the into the inside of the ear, toning it down, sending it back. Now I'm adding some gray, and you can make gray easily, just a bit of dark black, a bit of black into a white paint. Uh, in, so I'm laying in an underlayer stroking in the sh the way the hair would grow. This is very important to give form. I'm alternating with some white paint because I need to show where the poor light areas are, which uh, comes forward and makes the shape round. And at the same time, using my brush in a uh, different uh, way of turning my hand. Sometimes it's on edge, sometimes it's flat, but I'm, I'm really um, watching how the hair grows. And on a cow, they have a whorl. That's a little round area where all the hair grows outwards from it. So I'm careful to leave that little dark bit and come around to where the hair gets shorter and it's a little flatter along the forehead and in between the eyes. This cow's face is not straight on. It's at a, about a three-quarter angle, so you don't see the one eye. Here I'm still adding in grays, and I'm trying to find my... I, di I didn't draw it thoroughly on here. I'm using my brush to really draw with finding the eye shape and where the hair comes round there's wrinkles over the eye so I'm I'm leaving the it's very important to leave some of the black of the canvas behind and that's the beauty of working on a black canvas half of the work is done for you because your dark is already in you just have to remember to leave a little bit of the black here and there. Not much, but just enough that it really helps give form. Working down towards the muzzle and around, remembering how the planes of the face uh, coming around with uh, making a, a bit of an eyelash and it's, it's really starting to shape up now. I've used some gray on the shadowed side of the face and in some areas of the face is shadowed, so it's gray, and then I have light on top. Later on, I'll probably come in with another layer. I've just blended in yellow and uh, a tiny, tiny bit of red to make a pink and white, of course. So I'm forming uh, shapes around to make the muzzle, and the nose, uh, 
leaving behind just a little bit of the nostril shape. Here it's uh, just a little tricky to paint in that nose. Doing underneath just a little bit of a dark shape there for the mouth and then the chin. Now I'm coming back with a blue in the shadowed side of the face. This is going to give another layer and excitement to the color. It really makes it pop better. It works with uh, also the, uh, it makes it a little bit more interesting when you add uh, a blue against the red. But I'll be coming back in with more layers. So touching up the muzzle with similar paint on my brush. Just defining. I work all around the canvas. I don't just stay in one spot. And that's what I really like about acrylic paint that it dries really rapidly and in this type of painting it really works well. I can layer on the white right on top of the blue by now it's already pretty well dried. Acrylic paint is, is a lot about and it's all about layers because of that it dries so fast. Look at how the white makes the top of that nose and the bridge of the nose just pop right out, comes right forward. And then there's the eyelash with I've left the black from the from the canvas for the eye. And you can really see the light and dark values in this painting. Now that that layer is, is in it, uh, of the body and the ears, I'm now bringing back some more brighter, uh, warmer colors to make the ears pop out, the hair on top of the ears pop out. Where the sun would be or the light would be, would be touching it. There's one thing about acrylic paint. It does darken as it dries. So you'll need to layer up quite a bit. I felt that this portrait of the cow needed a background. And I thought a nice green background of various yellows and greens and would be in loose strokes, just uh, gives it a feeling that there's a, a pasture there. I'm painting around the cow its face and body. I don't need to paint up into the image. I just cut around it, just painting around it. To make the green, I've just used yellow and blue with various, maybe a little bit of, of uh, white to lighten and maybe a little bit of brown or, or black to darken. It's pretty simple. You could add a little red into your green to make a brown. You can just play with various amounts. And these are nice, big, loose strokes here and there and this and that, the way I turn my brush. And I felt like it needed to be a little lighter on the background on the top corner instead of leaving it all the same value. It's a little darker underneath in the shadowed area. You could put more and more layers on, but it probably doesn't need much. Just giving a feeling of grass. 
Now I'm back into touching up a little bit of the eye and around the eye to give it a little bit more life. I picked a smaller brush this time. The brush I'd been using all the way through has been a half inch brush, a flat half inch brush. But I think I switched here to a, a round brush just for a few highlights. Just touching up where the hair is lighter. I'm just finishing a little bit here and there. Maybe I put a little dark back in for the muzzle. This whole painting took me about 25 minutes. And you were calling it Red Baldy Cow Portrait. Yeah, Red Baldy. That's a type of cattle. It would be, all, <laughs> it's a ranch term. And it means a cow with a white, a red or a black cow with a white face. And that can be a lot of breeds, but mainly a Hereford cross animal. To get that white face, you would have to have that in it. That was a lovely conversation with Pat, wasn't it? I learned a lot from her. To learn more about Pat's life as a rancher and as an artist, stay tuned to the end of the video. Have a great week, everybody. We'll see you again next week. Bye. A lot of, a lot of memories. And one of those memories is the struggles. To, when we first started, we had no power and no water. And it I remember being out in in the in the dark at 40 minus 40 watering cattle from water water tank on wheels. You know, there was there was it was very difficult when we first started. I can imagine and very I, different from what, I, from what I know. That's right. And I remember, you know, checking the cattle on the on the range only in the rain because that was the only time we would have time off from from any time it was sunny, we were working on the land. <laughs> so we would ride, but it would be in the rain. It would be in the rain, that would be the time you had. Yeah, the time we had. So. And then there's others, you know, like, you know, checking calves at, 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 at uh, calving time and every two hours because it was so cold. I heard that's a very busy time for a rancher. Yeah, especially if we were calving early, like in February and March. We would I would go out every two hours if it was really cold and blowing and, and pick up calves and put them in the sleigh and bring them into the barn to put them in a light box because it, it was, uh, you know, would freeze their ears. And yeah, it's too cold. Yeah, but I also remember good times too where there I am at midnight kind of just laying back and the sun, the stars, we're out the Milky Way and the and the Northern Lights, so you know, just laying back and and looking up, and, you know, things like that. It's very that's wonderful, actually. Yeah, that's probably the artist that came out then <laughs> in me. Uh, but we still have some horses, and my husband has also kept a huge acreage, which keeps him completely busy. And he's clearing land, and and you know I have a huge garden. It's like you can't take the the farmer out of the farm. <laughs> it's there for forever, isn't it? That's right. Tell me about this group that you're in, Pat. Is it a painting group or what group is it? Well, I belong to a chapter in in the Prince George and, and region. That's a big, fairly big northern region, and it's a uh, called uh, the Central Interior Chapter of the Federed Co Federation of Canadian Artists, which is a very, very old art group. Yes, I have heard of them. Across Canada, mm -hmm. many, many chapters, uh, mainly in BC, but there's lots in Alberta, and there's even a new chapter in Ontario. And this, this um, 
organization was started by Lauren Harris and a few of the group of seven. So it's pretty old. And it started in Ontario. Now finally it's gone back to Ontario because it, it's, it really formulated there but came to BC and has been ongoing for 100 years. <laughs> but anyway, so we are uh, the newest, no, not the newest now, the, a fairly new chapter though. And we've been at the Two Rivers with a, a exhibition. I remember that one, yes. So we're going to have another one coming up in the fall, hopefully, at the Railway Museum. Mm -hmm. And what we do is we often do some Zoom critiques amongst ourselves. So mm -hmm. we're going to be doing one. Uh, I'm going to show you a painting that it's not completely done. But it's along with kind of what I've been doing with this map skate show. Yep. Okay. So that is, it's an 18 by 24. It's not quite finished. Anyway, I'm going to uh, enter that. It's not, uh, when it's finished, I, I'll get it finished. Anyway, um, so what we do, there. What we do is we do amongst ourselves some critiques to help our, each other out, you know. And so I'm going to put that, that'll be Thursday night. And we do a little Zoom meeting, and, and there's not too many of us, maybe six that are doing the Zoom meetings. Mm -hmm. And we'll do a little critique and help each other out on uh, what we want to put in. Sounds so we yeah. have a really nice way to keep connected right now too. Very, very much so. I mean, I really need that. There's really not many that are many artists in Fort St. James and we're really isolated. Mm -hmm. So in your Zoom meeting, is it just the artists from Fort St. James taking part in that? No, no. It's the uh, Central Interior chapter. So there's one from Mackenzie, an artist from Mackenzie that belongs. It's it's a big region. Mm -hmm. it, it goes all the way to you know can go all the way to Smithers, our members. Wow! And, and if it's um, interested in joining, how would they get a hold of the Canadian Federation? Yeah, well, they can get a hold of us through if you were to put artists with a s dot c a. And that's the main website. And then that would show all the chapters. Okay. So, right. So, but our chapter is called the Central Interior Chapter. It, it really helps us paint. Sometimes you need that an inspiration to paint. Well, you need like a reason. So, okay, well, if the show's coming up, you need new work. Uh, I think it's really important to have groups and to get, you know, to get together because we, we really are, we're isolated in our studios and need that kind of connection. It helps us with our work and it's a sharing thing. Mm -hmm. Oh, that sounds absolutely great. 